What is up, you thick, rear-end loving people? If you're watching this video, clearly you have an interest in the V-Rod Muscle or the Suzuki N109R, but in this video, we're looking at the V-Rod Muscle. Um, if you missed the last video, I was going over why my V-Rod Muscle is leaking oil, and I essentially got a lot of these components taken off to kind of figure out where exactly the oil leak is happening on my V-Rod Muscle, and I've determined that the oil leak is coming from this breather port here at the front and possibly some other areas and there's oil in places it should not be. Just to show you, this is what that breather port looks like. So that is leaking and possibly also that gasket right there on the bottom that sits on top of the throttle body right there. That is the throttle body. So in this video still, I am gonna be figuring out um, the extent of the oil leak, meaning taking more parts off so I can get to the point of cleaning. But before I get started, here's a uh, word for a video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Mechanics Wear. If you're like me, constantly getting oil everywhere and banging your hands when removing components, having an impact protective glove can make all the difference. But I've been using Mechanics Gloves before my YouTube channel, so it's cool to be on board with this brand. And if you like pink, they have that color as well. This is also the first time I've had a workshop apron, so I guess you can say things are getting pretty serious. But you can never have enough pairs of gloves, right? You can maybe even use a pair of these on your motorcycle. Who knows? But hey, if you want to get a set for yourself, there's affiliate links in the description, so check them out. So, of course, I have to take off the throttle body. Now, being that I'm not doing any adjustments to the, to the throttle body, I can simply leave the cables attached. Now, these uh, shop calls in here, this is not the proper way to do this. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna take these out and I'm gonna actually put duct tape around this because you don't want anything to get in these throttle bodies. So this is not really the right way to do this. But what I'm gonna start off by doing, I'm gonna actually, this is the uh, throttle position sensor. I'm gonna disconnect that, that has oil on it obviously. And also this is the IAC connector. We're gonna uh, take that off as well. And also I'm gonna take off this connector. I think that is connecting. Oh, there's the map sensor down in there too. I'm gonna to disconnect that. But to get this throttle body off, there's two screw holes right here. There's um, one right there. I gotta get all of my fingers. There's one right under that screw right there. And there's one right under that screw. And basically it just takes a Phillips, uh, Phillips head and we're gonna screw that off and then we're gonna be able to lift the throttle body up off, of course, once we take the connectors off. And then what I'm gonna do, because we still have fuel lines connected here, we're gonna to have to actually um, start the bike. Well, I'm actually gonna to have to disconnect the fuel lines first and then I'm gonna start the bike until it runs out of fuel. So there's basically no fuel in the lines um, when this is happening because I'm actually gonna be taking the fuel rail off once I get the throttle body off. And then once we do that, I'm actually gonna run the bike for a few seconds until it shuts off after we do that. And then this little guy right here, this is the main fuse. We're gonna disconnect this as per the Harley manual, just so we don't accidentally try to start the bike um, while we're actually working on it and potentially sending um, electricity through, through, through the bike and making stuff do stuff it's not supposed to do. So that's the plan tonight, and then later on this week, I'm actually gonna clean um, a lot of the oil up that's there. So tonight, I'm just gonna get those parts off, but let's get to it. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, it is cold as heck in this garage. So for me to stay a little bit warm, I'm gonna be drinking me some whiskey while I'm doing this. Trust me, it helps. All right, first order of business is taking this out and duct taping these so they're not uh, exposed. Boy, this is by far the cheapest duct tape I've ever had. This crap sucks. I'd have came out better using the damn shop rag. <sighs> so this is actually counter freaking intuitive in my opinion. Look at this, how it's coming off, the gloves is coming off on it. And honestly, being that there was half, I guess, oil on this, it's starting to come up anyway. But I'm trying to do this the right way. Um, so I'm gonna actually screw this out as well. 
screw it out by hand. I'm just gonna sit it off inside the air box, off to the side, just like that. Sit that in there. Like I said, now I'm gonna get a screwdriver and go for those two little screws, basically the clamps that are holding this in. I'm just gonna pivot it out of, out of the way. Actually, a lot. The first thing I'm gonna do is take these uh, connectors, throttle position sensor, IAC sensor, um, and this sensor that goes into the wiring harness. Not sure which one this is, but I'm pretty sure it has something to do with, do with the uh, electricity that goes to the fuel rail, to the fuel injector. So these three are gonna come off, and then I'm gonna to to get screwdriver and uh, loosen these clamps right here on the throttle bodies, and this should just lift up. So, yeah. And also, I probably need to take this cover right here off so I can get direct access to what I need. And it looks like this is held on by this right here. This bracket should take the whole thing off. And also there's one screw right there. I'm pretty sure just this top one would take this whole thing off, but that's what I'm about to do. All right, this was a pain in my ass because I didn't have my, uh, I needed it. I used the deep socket for this. Clearly, I needed a deep socket. I used the 13. The problem is, I couldn't find my uh, my um, converter, so I couldn't use my uh, ratchet. So I ended up using my breaker bar, and that was allowing me to get this off. But you can see this oil cake behind here as well. That's just gonna hang right there. On well, second thought, absolutely no need to do that. I'm just gonna pull these prongs off right here. Electrical contacts. And now the horn is disconnected. So I'm gonna lay this aside. All right. One electrical connection out the way. And now we're gonna disconnect this uh, throttle position sensor. There's oil <laughs> right there, actually. I'm gonna pull that out the way. Actually, I gotta pull the IAC sensor off as well. That is off. Pull those two greasy uh, oil connectors out the way. And then we're gonna do this one right here. Actually, I might wait on that one, because like I said, I think that is the, uh, one, one of those goes to the map sensor. I'm pretty sure, I don't know what that other one goes to, but I'm gonna wait on that. Let me get the throttle bodies out first. Let's just show you guys, it's a little bright. There's one right there. So you can see where that's at. And the other one's right there. So you just put a screwdriver in there. All right, so I am a little confused. I haven't been able to get this throttle body off even with a gentle rocking and pull up motion and actually the V-Rod is signaling that the alarm is trying to go off even though the key's on the bike. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect these fuel rails, meaning I gotta start the bike. I gotta disconnect the fuel lines from the bike. Um, then I got to uh, purge any of the, um, the fuel that's in the lines by starting the bike then take the main fuse out and uh, see what we do. Cause this is a, yeah, this is a bit of a challenge, but I'm gonna figure it out. All right, so this is the fuel line and I think this is the return line, but this is the fuel pump connector that you're gonna disconnect. So basically when you start the bike, it's not gonna shoot fuel through the line. So any of the gas that's still in the line, once you try to start the bike, it's not gonna be able to actually come out because right, uh, cause once you start the bike, is if this was connected, uh, fuel is going to shoot through the line. That's what starts the bike. But if this isn't connected, any fuel that's still in the line, I'm just trying to start the bike. It's going to try to purge that out. So I'm going to start the bike, try to purge any of the fuel that's still in the system out, and then we're going to pull that fuse so there's no accident, accidental stuff. So, right, fuel connected line. Turn this on. The starter. So we should just get like a starving. done doing this alarm stuff pull this come on bud there we go so now come back over here 
nothing no lights so the bike is completely dead unless you touch the battery of course and this is the uh the fuse so yeah now i'm gonna try to disconnect these fuel lines and of course the fuel is gonna go everywhere you just squeeze these two prongs together and lift Bit of lift, I'm gonna get fuel. Oh, no fuel, cool. So that's one. This other one's a little. Yep, there it is. No fuel. So now the fuel lines are taken apart. Kind of push these out of the way. Pull them out of the way, rather. So yeah, those are the fuel lines. Um, don't want to touch them, get anything in them, but you can see these two little clips right here. All you do is uh, you just squeeze them on both sides. There's two sides on it. Yeah, you just squeeze and you're able to pull up on both of these and you'll be able to get them out. So I'm gonna try to get this fuel in this starter body out now. Harley Davidson said a gentle tug. Looks like I might use Charles freaking Mike to get this thing out of here. It ain't coming out easy. And I'm thinking, Gentle tug my ass. Holy crap. This thing is not a. Uh, all I want to do is just. Once I get this out, I'm done for the night. But crap, this is not a. Uh, this is not easy, Harley. I told y'all it was cold out here. But after a little bit of persuasion, I was able to get this throttle body out. Um, more than likely, these throttle bodies haven't come out of this bike since 2013. So they're just really in there. So if you're trying to get yours out, if you're dealing with this, you just have to give them a really good tug. So let me show you. So being that I'm not adjusting the throttle cables, I'm just gonna leave everything here on. I might, you know what? I might disconnect the throttle cables, I'm not sure yet, but as long as I'm not changing anything or adjusting anything, everything should go back based on what the manual said. So now, see what I'm saying? Like I can technically take all of that off. And those are my my uh that's the throttle body and this oh god this oil under that too man yeah i'm just gonna take this off and see if uh, i can get it off without adjusting anything and uh now we're looking down into everything so next up is the fuel rail and these uh throttle body hoses and or throttle body uh, air ducts and then we're getting a clearer view of how much oil oh my god it's a lot man this is getting worse the further i go down in in here but we're learning together. All right, so I'm gonna just take these off. So I should be able to take the cables off, like I said. Now what I'm looking at is, I'm trying to figure out which cable is which. So there's a yellow indication on this throttle cable and there's no indication on this one. So that'll let me know that when looking at the throttle body from this side, that yellow cable goes there and the other one goes there. So I'm just gonna disconnect these uh, cables, kind of like a clutch cable. Just pop it up and it, and it comes out. And uh, we'll just set these aside. And like I said, no adjustments, no adjustments to anything. We're just taking it out and getting it out of the way. And for those of you that don't know how the throttle body system works, let me show you this. So when you apply throttle, the butterflies, of course, this is looking from the bottom. This is the, the bottom end of the throttle body. This is what opens it up and lets air into the system. And the air gets into the, as the spark and it can uh, mix it with the gas and you get kaboom and you get horsepower and torque. <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Gotta be very careful not to drop anything in those hoses. Why? Because now you're looking at the top of your valves. Ooh, that's gonna be a problem. So I'm gonna get this, disconnect this cable. That's one. The best way to do this, I had to take the tape off because I had to open the butterflies all the way up and that tape was kind of getting in the way. Don't worry, I'm gonna clean all this as best I can when I get to that point. But now I'm able to, I guess, get that cable kind of a, uh, I know some people are gonna be screaming at me, Brandon, you worry about the valves. What about the valves? You probably can't see this, but. Damn it. There we go. God, that was tougher than it I thought it was gonna be. And just like that, we got the throttle body out. So I'm gonna tape up both of these. Well, I probably won't have to tape up both ends, but, um, but I'm definitely gonna clean it when that time comes, but you can see that gunk on it. Uh, yeah, so that's the 
the uh, IAC valve right there or the IAC sensor connector in the middle. And that's your throttle position sensor right there. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm getting a little paranoid now because you're looking directly at the top of the uh, valves. If you drop anything in there, that's a fucking nightmare. So there's not much holding these fuel rails on. There is a washer under this that when you start turning this, you have to hold it with, with, with your hand. But like, like I said, there's not much holding this thing on. So once I get this off, I'm gonna take these bolts off, rotate the, uh, I'm gonna get one, the front injector off, and then we're gonna rotate and get the rear injector off. And the fuel rail will be out. And then we're gonna do the map sensor and get these two off. I'm gonna plug these holes up so nothing gets in here. And then we're gonna start cleaning some oil up. Like I said, these things aren't held on by much pressure. More, they're not held on with much force. It doesn't take much force to get them off. Oil is in the screw of the fuel rail, folks. What's holding these fuel rails on is a rubber O-ring. Yeah, the fuel rail is connected by this, so not that we have any power to the bike, but we're just gonna disconnect it. Of course, there's oil on it. So now the fuel rail is free to completely come out. With a little finesse, I was able to get one of these uh, injectors out. A lot of this is just finesse. And I should be able to get the other one with about the same amount of just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Shiggle, shiggle, shiggle. You're supposed to rotate this thing towards the cam chain. It's not much wiggle room in here though, hardly. So I had to go back and read the directions. Apparently I was supposed to take off this damn map sensor first. Cause I was just wondering why, if it doesn't come off, there's a reason why. Just to show you guys, nah, I'll get that out later. Where the map sensor is, this is the front air duct. The map sensor is right there. So now that I did that, I should have pulled this thing kind of out of the way. All right, it's out of the way now. Oh, it has a little plug in there. Where that hole is right there. All right, so I'm a little pissed off, and I'm gonna tell you why. So I've been trying to do this by the directions, do it the right way. So Harley didn't tell me, or at least the manual didn't tell me, to just take this stupid thing off, this air duct, um, so I can move the fuel rail out without trying to pry the damn thing off because the directions weren't clear. And the only reason I knew to just go ahead and take this off was because in the picture, this was not under here anymore. It was by this uh, screw hole, or at least it was by this. So that kind of let me know that, okay, this isn't in the same position anymore. And I was worried about taking this off because it has a seal, but it looks to be perfectly fine. There's not like another gasket seal thing under here, so it should be good. And now, of course, the fuel rail comes out as it should. I took my gloves off temporarily. <laughs> so we're just gonna tighten that down. We're gonna cover this uh, breather port up. I'm gonna cover these uh, these valve openings, or cylinder openings back, back up so we don't drop anything in there. And even if I were to drop something in there, I do have a magnetic uh, arm, so if I drop that in, I can easily get it out. But either way, you don't want nothing dropping on the top of those uh, valves. I do want to show you guys this though while I have it open. Check this out. So you guys can see down in there, I do have a little oil residue that I'm noticing too, which is uh, I don't know if be the concern. Uh oh, fuel rails trying to drop. I don't know if it'd be concerned about that or not. Um, and of course, the other side, it's pretty much the same way. So it's not. Perfect, but there there is some there is some oil spots down in there. Maybe I run some sea foam down in the bike. I don't know yet, but it was uh, worth looking into since I'm already got everything off right. All right, so now I'm gonna take this fuel rail. Oh, gotta disconnect it. I got to do that, huh? Oh no, you're just gonna dump fuel. Damn it. Didn't think that one through. Thought all the fuel was out of there, but I just dumped fuel out of the fuel rail. I'm gonna disconnect these two electrical um, lines to the fuel rail, and then I'm gonna move it out of the way. All right, rather than trying to disconnect these individual wires on the fuel rail, I just disconnected the one from here. Let me show you all this, bump this up. 
There's two little pins right here. You clip that with a flathead, and you clip the one on the other side with a flathead, and you would just pop it off. So now I can take the whole fuel rail, even though it's gonna, I still dumping fuel. <laughs> trying to show you guys this and do this at the same time. Come on. Come on. Mm. Nothing's holding you. Oh, there's one more damn wire. All right, finally got it off. There's one little piece at the end. Wow, try not to dump fuel. This little guy right here um, came off of right there in the dead center. Just had to pry it up. So now I have access to, I guess, clean and do whatever I need to do. Shop back, clean, and we're going to save that for another time. All right, people, that concludes tonight's video. That took a lot longer than I expected because I was struggling with getting that fuel rail off. But, uh, oh, I needed all of that. But as of right now, we got the fuel rail off. We got the throttle body off. We got the uh, throttle map sensor and a few other sensors off the horn. And now we have access to see everything we need to see as far as getting the oil off and making sure that this thing is clean and um yeah it wasn't as it wasn't that it was difficult i didn't understand the directions and it was a little confusing and uh, i had kept having to jump around the directions or at least the manual to figure out what i needed to take off at what point in time but at this point now i'm going to conclude it and i'm going to cover up these uh cylinder openings with a valve cover openings so nothing drops in and even if something did more so I guess like big screws, I can get that out with a, mag a magnet if I had to, but still I don't want anything in there. But um, yeah, so as always, if you enjoyed listening to my story, um, thank you. Thank you for listening. And as always, if you're subscribed, I will see you in the very near next one. Peace.